Uh, good morning, all. How is everyone? Very good. Isaac got himself some pretty headshots. Look at you, man. Wow, it's a boys' club. Check it out. Oh, yeah, good. There's a girl. <laughs> good morning. Okay. Hi, Robin. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Yeah, ladies. look at Isaac. Isn't he cute? Look at him in his suit. He's looking snazzy this morning. Yeah. Good How's morning. everyone's week going? We are crossing the finish line into the later half of the best part of this week. It is Wednesday. That means that today is the day that you need to change the output for your week to still be successful. And there's a picture of baby Dan. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know. You didn't tell us we we're going to be sharing. You should have told us all. We would have all shared. Oh, I moved my office into my home office today. Well, I just put my computer in here and set up on my kitchen table so I could work out all day. And it was on the top of the very first box I moved. So I was like, oh, how cool. <laughs> uh, anyways, what can we do to help you be successful today as a group, as an individual, as a coach? What can we script through? What are you having troubles with? What can we work on for you? I have a question. So I got the title report today and I put it in the loop, but who else do I need to send that to is one question. So title report should automatically get sent to the clients and that's part of it. You just get copied on it. You need to send it to the loop. Okay. So And, and review it. Yeah, absolutely. And when I review it, I see that there are judgments against the seller. Uh, yep. So now you got now you got some con now it's a conversation. Yeah, and that's a conversation with the listing agent. Make sure that those items are going to be taken care of prior to the close of escrow, or are they going to roll it into the close of escrow? When does title send that to you? Typically, five to ten days after contract. Have you not received yours? I don't think so. Uh, email title and say, hey, um, I still don't have a prelim. A prelim stands for preliminary title report. Okay. So, yep. And that's a great thing. What you do is review it to make sure that your clients aren't buying a house that has a ton of liens on it. It's more so for the listing agent to see what kind of homework they need to do for the seller to get cleared because the buyer's agent and most of that stuff is going to get rolled into the closing costs that are associated at the close of escrow and just tacked on to the seller. And this is important for the buyer's agent because if this is a thin deal and the seller doesn't have the proceeds, it could hold up recording. But we don't want to add. Great so questions, guys. Great questions. Prelim title report? Is that what you called it? Yeah, prelim. Yeah. Preliminary okay. title report. Okay. I noticed that in the loop, like the placement holder, but I didn't know. Okay. You're learning so much. Yeah, the trick was, um, you know, again, the, it's always upon both agents to, to actually read that title report. When you're the buyer's agent, it's not so important because truly the title report has effect on the seller, but it also could have stuff in it uh, for your buyer. For example, um, my buyer on a big house on the west side of town, the preliminary title report had 22 easements recorded against it. And they were from 1979 all the way up to three months ago. So fortunately now, the preliminary title report, as you read it, section B2, which is where that stuff's going to be, they have hot links on those easements. So you can actually just click on that and it'll go in and read the actual or uh, present you with the actual easement that was recorded against the property. Um, a lot of it is um, not necessarily in meets and bounds language, but some of it is and it gets to be a little bit deep or a little bit difficult to understand. The newer ones have a map or a sketch of what the easement is, but older easements do not. So we had a field day researching 22 easements 
some of them recorded in the 80s and 90s that did not have maps with them. And it was all in, you know, meets and bounds gibberish. So it's, it can be quite a project. That's not to scare you. It's just to be aware of the fact that uh, title reports, it, you, it behooves you to uh, read the title reports, know what's in them. And especially when it comes to easements, um, I, you know, and if you can get into things where <clears throat> there's a wall on a property that might be six inches over the line, um, wall was built too high. Uh, these are things also the city's inspectors can get into. But um, on that particular one, it was quite an education. And I literally had to have someone from the title agency get on the phone with me and walk through some of them to understand what they were talking about so that my buyer would understand what he was buying into. Good point. That was great. I like it. Yes. Clearly, Larry comes up with some fun situations. I've had two easements, never more than that. Yeah. Well, most of the times it's a non-issue. You know, when it's a house in a subdivision and stuff, there's hardly any real issue with that. This is a, uh, it was a split piece of land, 4.3 acres up way up in the Tucson, um, West Mountain foothills, or not the foothills, all the way up in the top. Um, it was, uh, you know, Broken Springs Trail is a road that was cut in back in 79 off of El Camino del Cerro. And there's all these easements about utilities and uh, water for the whole section up there that are recorded on this property because they got recorded on all of the properties up there because they all obviously had uh, uh, easement rights for these people to get to their property. So it was, it was a pretty interesting case and, then, and it was a, a good little education with the title company on how to read those, how to read those things. <clears throat> you should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else can we help script with guys? I and mean, we got, got so much going on. Silence. It must be working. Where are you driving to, Miss Emily? A, um, I'm driving to a buyer's house or a house I'm representing the buyer on, and they're getting it pest controlled sprayed before they moved in, and a water softener test. Um, so yay. But I have a question though. Um, so I have a listing, and it backs up to a pretty busy road. And the buyer or the sellers haven't had it for two years yet. And so they're really sticking to their guns on their price point. And a cash buyer has come in that's pretty darn close. It's not darn close. I mean, the house is listed at 375. They want 370 at the lowest so they can at least clear all their funds out plus have a little bit. And this cash buyer's come in at 267.5. And that's like the highest and best he will go. He won't touch it anymore. And I'm just like, you know, it's been on the market 17 days, 18 days. So it's not been on the market a terribly long time or anything like that, but it's pristine shape. We've had tons of traffic, you know, so I'm like, well, you can wait, but July sometimes gets dead and we stop seeing as many offers, but this is a weird time. So I don't know. Um, and so I don't want to convince them to go one way or the other. I just present it and say, which way do you want to go? But I feel like this 267 or 367.5 offer is a good offer. It should be good enough. And I'm like, can't it be good enough? Come on. Yeah. Oh, actually, I did so, get that title report. Sorry. Anyway, what you do know, you I say to those <laughs> kind of <laughs> sellers? I mean, they're, they're young, they're millennials. I don't know. You know, I thought you said two fifty seven. That's why I had the heart attack. It was a hundred thousand well, dollars off. I, I was like, nope. I, I probably what I heard. did. I probably did. I've been yeah. switching my twos and threes all day long or so, all day yesterday. <laughs> so so it's listed for three seventy five. They have an offer for three sixty seven five. So it's twenty five hundred dollars off what they feel like is their their low. Yeah, and you I really don't want to give up commission at this point. Sure. Have you talked to the other agent and talked about uh, negotiating and what they'll put in, you know, what, what the uh, uh, buyer will put in, but let's find a happy number. 
well, we've been stuck at 365 for these cash buyers. And I said, I, I was, and I asked my sellers, I'm like, well, what if they came halfway? And they're like, eh. and then I convinced the buyer's agent, can they at least go halfway? And so that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Are you real? If, th if this is the right house and the house you're interested in, and you've put the time into reviewing it and thinking about it, are you really going to let it go over a few thousand dollars? Right. I have no idea because these guys have let it go no. twice so far. I mean, that the buyers have walked away because they're like, oh, it's cash. They'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. And so they keep coming back every four or five days. And this is the first time we've actually had a solid, like, written offer for the, the money. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I, you know, if you're not that far off the price, I, you know, so has the seller countered? Yeah, and they've refused to see counters. They're like, take it or leave it. Like, okay. So we have till five o'clock today. We'll see how it goes. No, you can't. Yeah, that's just not buy. always key. Yeah. So, and then on the flip side of this, I have million dollar buyers that the million dollar buyer houses are actually flying off the freaking market. I cannot believe how fast 1.2, 1.6, 1.0 are going right now. <laughs> I mean, it is freaking crazy. And if you have a family of seven kids and you know of a million dollar home that can house seven kids, let me know. I have a buyer need. Tucson Mountain Reserve? Isn't there one over there? Is that on three acres? Yeah. 3.3. 3. I thought there was one. They're, yeah, they're trying to stay Tanka Verde on the east side. Oh. You could be picky yeah. or you could be homeless, whatever. Yeah. So, first world problems. Yeah. But that's what I'm doing today. Yeah, the conversation with that would be, you know, what are are they willing to take the risk of having the house in the market even longer and paying one mortgage payment, which would cover that twenty five hundred dollars spread, or do they want to take take a cash offer, which I imagine would be a, a quick close. Yeah, that's the that's the seller's agent. They should have been all over that concept right away. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, I've I've told them, I've told them that it's a quick close. But the thing is, is that my sellers don't have to be a quick close. They're like, oh, that's really fast. <laughs> so yeah, it's all sorts of backwards right now. So I'm just like, okay. But anyway, we'll get through it, I'm sure. I just keep my fingers crossed that there's one more offer coming in. So we'll see. Fingers crossed, I think there will be. This thing is telling them, sit on the offer. If you don't want to take it, then don't. Because if the house is priced right in this market, you're going to pull some more offers. The fact that 60 days on the market, you got an offer on a 350 to $400,000 house is decent because those are average turning in 30 plus days. So if they really want it, they'll keep coming back for it. All right. that that, that's what I'm thinking too. So we'll see. I just tell the agent, like you're at 370, that's your net bottom. And I've had those conversations with the buyer's agent and said, listen, I want to make a deal. This is all about us working back and forth together. My sellers have to walk away with a positive on this house, and that's 370. If it works, let me know. I'll gladly send you a counter and extend in the response times. If not, I appreciate your efforts. It's the takeaway close. And that's all you got to do is just say, hey, you know what? This is, and it's a hard position for negotiation when they're like, nope, this is their absolute best. They're not going to do anything more than that. Okay. The, the power of negotiation comes from the ability to walk away. Amen. So you have to know when to close them and when to hold them. And when to fold them, right? Yeah. Oh, I never fold. Lady Gaga was a hell of a poker player. Yeah. <laughs> Angela caught the hell. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, that's some good good feedback there for having conversations between you know buyer sellers and negotiations. Who else needs some help with something? Come on, this is where we need to, this is our midweek where you need some helps or are we just all on here to see my pretty face? Don't lie to me, I know that's not the case. Hmm. We like to hear you, not necessarily see you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested in hearing what people's value adds are. You know, besides all the basic, they even have some great value add hey, hire me because 
X, Y, or Z. I mean, I have what I always say, but I'd love to hear other people's value add of, you know, why I'm, I'm the best realtor that you, that not every other realtor say. It's a good one. Let's go. Yeah, um, sit down with the buyer broker and read them line nine. And with that, say, has any other agent ever presented you with this information? You know what line nine is? You're going to tell us, right? So I don't have to go look it up. <laughs> you should know this. I'm going to know it after this. <laughs> line nine is, this, is a one-line statement, and we talked about this once before, yes, which do. is your obligation to your client as a real estate agent. You have the obligation and the duties of fiduciary, obedience. Uh, yeah. I, I, now I can slap myself for not knowing the rest of it <laughs> off the top of my head. But it, the, I, it's, it's line nine. You know, if you sit down with them and, and point this line out on that buyer broker, this is what I, this is my, my commitment to you as a client. And this is what, you know, what I'm upheld by, by the, by the, the state of Arizona, the real estate, Arizona real estate department. And so on. Th these are the obligations that I have to you. And this is my guide. And this is what, you know, this is what I'm totally aware of and guarantee you that I will follow. You know, Larry, that's a, you know, a very good point. I'm thinking as you're presenting the, you know, the buyer broker agreement, I have my, my buyer, uh, or, you know, my client initial that, that they saw that. Not a bad idea, but that separates you from most every other agent. I have never heard another agent even understand it, know it, or, or talk about this is something I, uh, uh, present to my clients to make yeah. sure they understand that I, what I understand my role is. Yeah, let's not get too far. It's actually the real estate election, the disclosure line nine, line nine, right. nine. The buyer broker is just you're identifying you're the, uh, you're the broker party. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, the real estate election disclosure. I think they need to be given in sequence. Real estate election disclosure right on top of the buyer the buyer broker agreement because that's they're they're contingent upon each other. So line nine so is the what's What's a good sound bite though? Like if I'm putting on a postcard or a flyer door to door, or I can't just say line nine, my fiduciary duties are, you know, and, you know, steal a bunch of legalese and no, words I've, I've, that some people don't know, which I'm, I'm great. I think that's great in a buyer's presentation and in a sit down or a Zoom presentation, but just trying to get it out into social media, kind of like the videos that we were talking about earlier this week about, you know, stop You're renting, welcome. buy now, whatever. Anybody have any cool little sound bites that way? Yeah, the one thing I've used in the past is I'm not here to help you buy or sell a house. I'm here to advise you during the process of the most expensive purchase you'll ever make. Or another one you could say is I'm here to make sure that you have all the information you need to make a well-informed decision. Did you know it's free to use? My services to help you buy a home? Why would you go anywhere else? I'll make sure I take care of you financially, take care of your paperwork legally, and make sure you get delivered wholesomely. How about if, if you had to shoot a hundred realtors, I hope I will be the last one that you'd ever shoot. It's all there. Because the words fiduciary, obligatory, you know, financial, doesn't, no one has that in their words. Our job as professionals to, is to take our jargon and put it in the consumer terms. We say prelim, what is it? Preliminary title report. Okay, still, what is that? Well, that's the homework that the title company does to make sure that your house doesn't have any issues before you buy it for the title. Oh, okay. Well, we're doing our home inspections, look at the physical side of it. They're doing the title inspections to do the title side of it. So if we can break it down into terms they understand, before real estate, how many of you even use the word fiduciary? <laughs> and Angela laughs at it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't need that in property <laughs> management. <laughs> I was an insurance agent for 20 years, so. Well, yeah. Yeah, you, had, you had a fiduciary responsibility. But that's the thing is clients don't understand that. Consumers don't understand that. So we need to break it down. Your value statements need to be just that. So give me some else. What else are you guys working on? Right, let me hear some more of your value statements. So I, I like where Emily's taking this. 
Mara, that was a great presentation. Why should I choose you as my listing agent versus the guy that just showed up yesterday? I normally emphasize um, professional photos and just making the house look terrific because I just have the standard of excellence that I, I have to make the house look great and it will help itself more quickly. Um, and I just talked to a guy who was flipping a home and he's like, why, if it's going to sell on the first day, why would you stage it? And I'm like, this is just my standard. I have to make it look great because it's a reflection, you know, on you and we're going to get a higher dollar amount for your home. So that's just one thing I've used. It doesn't necessarily answer the question you just asked, but I, I have, I do think that that's important. Um, I like, I like your term standard of excellence. Because we all have standards when it relates to something. And so, yeah, that just really struck me recently because when he asked me that, he's like, why would you bother to haul all this stuff over to this house? I'm like, the better I make it look, the more money you make. That's exactly what I said. So, yeah. With, like staging, with, with staging, it should, the house shows at a higher value. So that's the thing is, when I use professional photographs. So does he. Right. I would have had you on that. Professional photographs? Absolutely. No problem. Mr. Seller, I, that's a great question. All professional photographs. Yeah. So yeah the, um, I have a list actually of these are all the things I do um, for really expensive homes. You know, like drone photography or Matterport, and I have examples and a booklet to show them if they don't know what Matterport looks like, um, assuming people don't necessarily have Wi Fi. Um, so going through a whole list of things to show them. And I think part of that came from the Lewis marketing suite, Michael Lewis marketing suite, um, but just made it my own. But I think it is important to show people here, this is what I'm gonna do for you. So recall, Mr. Seller, it's a great question. If you would reference back and give the material on the listing packet I gave you, you can see that my standard of excellence far exceeds my competition. And that's why I'm the best choice in getting you maximum return on your investment by selling it with me. I like to stand at my higher standard of excellence. That's great, Marna. Put that on your card. That's awesome. It is really good. Teresa, right. how's Georgia? There's Teresa. I haven't seen Teresa in forever. I was just going to ask, where are you? I am in a horrible, humid, thunderstorm, tornado ridden southern Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. A lot of people I know go other places. They leave Tucson, even though it's 100 and what, 10? And they come back and go, oh, I'm so glad I'm not in that humidity wherever they have gone. Because I like humidity. It makes my hair even curlier. Oh, I, I have a wonderful um, problem-ridden home here I'm trying to sell that I would love to sell you. I'm losing my ever-loving mind. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to educate my real estate agent here because I'm not licensed in Georgia, but she's trying to sell my house. And um, it's, it's challenging. And um, Keller Williams agent, yeah. So she's, you know, she's used to. She's got her own team, and she works with Luxury Group, is what their name is. And she's real sweet and all. And um, but um, mine is just uh, an eyesore. Um, it's a beautiful place on a lake. However, the area town is not the greatest, so it is a challenge because you can't overcome the area. What town is it? You, what, you said Southern, what, what uh, town is it? Albany, Georgia. Is that near Valdosta or no? Um, it's, yeah, it's not too far from Valdosta actually, but Valdosta is uh, a much nicer city, so. Um, my husband fell in love with it. It's a gorgeous place on the lake. However, for health reasons, we moved to Tucson, which we both love and feel much better there. The, it's just everyone that comes and looks at it, they love it. Um, however, we've come down to 219 now 
we're already losing $58,000 on it. Um, and the last guy that I just bounced back and forth, a uh, proposed buyer, wanted to come down to 160. We paid 157 and put over 100 grand in it. Um, so it's it's not a good situation and I'm just losing my mind. Is the potential to sell it or not to, to rent it out until the market becomes more favorable for you? Well, we live so far away. Uh, managers happen all the time. I would, I would rather take a 10% hit on my gains every month than a 25% hit on the investment itself. Yeah, we're paying, I'm paying about two grand a month to keep it pristine and I got a pool guy, I got a lawn guy, I got, you know, everybody keeping it perfect for showings and losing money every month. So yeah, that's not how business is supposed to work. Nope, not having a good time. Any suggestions except, yeah, renting, I uh, had one guy want to rent. He's very wealthy in the area, but he didn't want to even give me $1,000 a month and wanted uh, me to take care of keeping all utilities in my name and on and also keep the lawn service on. And I said, well, let's see. It's going to cost me $1,000 a month just to have you live there. So I don't think that's a good idea. This, this guy's got lots of money and owns lots of businesses. So, yeah. <laughs> And that's how he got wealthy and by being a cheese ball. Bring people over, yes. <laughs> by being a cheese ball, yeah. I have a quick ask. Um, is anybody available to help me out? I belong to a business networking group that meets weekly, and I need someone to sub for me tomorrow. So you wouldn't be able to meet at Mastermind today or the this group. But um, anyone willing to? help me out if you are just message me or text me um i just need someone to sub for me tomorrow from 8 to 9 30. We'll i'll reach out bni networks yep bni awesome <clears throat> Well, guys, we've talked a couple of things. Who did some homework yesterday? We talked about give me a one-line value proposition you can put in an advertisement that might strike up some interest. Who did that? Who came up with something? I didn't, but I thought about it, boy. Man, my brain was, I couldn't, ugh. What'd you come up I, with? I'm still thinking about it right now. I, I just looked at Larry, the house guy. I looked at his little thing on there, and I was like, ugh, I need a catchphrase. I need something, and I can't think of anything. I'm trying. How about us? We talked about this a long time. We're going to finish on this thought is the three different models of advertising. If you're going towards rental conversions, they're looking for free money. You're looking for move up buyers, just, you know, buyers in general, they're looking for properties. If you're looking for sellers, they're looking for facts. That's how you, that's how you grab them is not you're not going to advertise, look at all these houses for sale to a seller. They're not, they don't care. You're, hey, the house sold in three days for 99.9% .9 of the list price. Multiple offer situation was fantastic. First time home buyers don't care. It's what our, our audience that you're targeting yet you realize you will single out the other two if you're targeting a single one, but you have to go after them in, in, that, in that care. So what can you say in a short line, in a single sentence, something like that, that'll grab in some interest. Larry, you had something? Well, the one I've been working on and trying to get it to sound right, because it may sound a little bit too much inside language, but um, I, I do use this. Um, as an individual agent, I am with you from the beginning to the end of the process. You won't talk to six different people. I am always available for you directly and my focus is wholly on you as my client. But that's the individual agent versus team thing and it's kind of an inside thing and so I'm not sure if that's even really carrying much weight. Let's try and me, just try. Been... Sorry, go, go ahead, Emily. No, go ahead, Emily. I... I just, uh, for me, a short one that I've been thinking about lately is um, just integrity, the foundation of your real estate needs. And that's 
come, you know, just a little sound bite from that I've been using recently. I use, I'm the go-to guy because I get her done. And that makes complete Thanks, Larry, the cable guy. <laughs> The <laughs> house get her done. But no, you guys got not even just a single slogan for your everyday use. Like, hi, my name's Big Dan Caldwell. I'm your friend in real estate. Like, kind of simple. But like, I want you to look at on it. You can put on a Facebook post a picture of a house. You know, you remember that background I had yesterday with Doc Holliday and James Bond in front of the OK Corral? Yep. I use that and I say, when you're looking for a realtor who's better than just okay, give the go-to guy a call. Or, or if you guys are celebrating a, a client's victory, you know, first time home buyer, one out in a bidding contest, why don't you get a picture of them being all excited? Like, hey, looking for a house, dot, 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 this could be you, dot, 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 call me. If you look at my background right here, if you notice, I created a statue of myself. It's on a concrete thing there holding the, you know, free pizza. So now I can put this statue on anything because everybody else is tearing down statues. I'm putting them up just to get someone's attention. They're, they're coming after you, Dick. Don't worry. But this is, I want you guys to find ways that, of explaining, you know, a value proposition quickly. You know, stop renting, start owning. You know, need to sell. Let me give you top dollar. Need to sell? I'll make it easy. Got a big move coming? Let me get you there in style. Tired of sharing your parking space? Let's get you a driveway. So these are all things you can think about. The Alpha Team, one of our teams here at the Keller Williams, I, I was part of the, the, the mind behind their slogan, turning dreams into driveways. Kind of brilliant. These are things that you guys can come up with is, you know, Mar Burgard, a higher standard of excellence. I can see that on a luxury sign right now. I've been using uh, Mar Burgard, your best move yet. Ooh, I like that. See, these are, these are where your creativity comes in, guys. Just let it flow. What, what talks to you? What has fun with it? And if you, just start putting stuff on your social media and your business page. You know, when you have a client you're excited about, like I know two of you on this call have their very first clients, you know, one of you've got your third, let's go with it. And that's all you got to do is get excited behind it. One of my, one of my best campaigns ever is I did a silhouette. I had my, my homeowners put the, they had their arms up and like cheering. And all I did is I take the shadow in the background and I said, homeowners loading. And I got a lot of people like, Ooh, what is this? <laughs> I want you guys to start thinking about how you can capture, you know, attention without being, did you know I was a realtor? I can help you buy a house. I can't, I'm good at it. I'm real good at it. <laughs> Step away from the camera, Dan. Step away that's, from the camera. The There's so many realtors out there. Like I saw a video today that goes, hey guys, your friend Josh here. I want to tell you that I have committed to helping five families just like you buy or sell a house this month. So if you want to be one of those five, give me a call. No, I'm not going to. So be different, be bold, stand out, sell houses, help people. <laughs> That was the Scott Lehman approach. <laughs> it was. <laughs> but it works, I guess. Sometimes some people, you know, bright shining stars don't shine long. Teresa, we're all going to put some good vibes out there for you. You're going to get that thing sold. You're going to get a good offer on it. No more stress, no more headache. Come back to us. <laughs> Okay. Hey, I need an advice. Cause yes. I need I need advice because I have a buyer, first time buyer, but she needs at least one point five help on closing costs, and I've been losing every single opportunity. Increase your offers things. by at least one point five. Oh, trust me, I've been above that. 
and I even went uh, as is, like as is, and going ten thousand dollars up, and not asking for, like, and no, I like I, I'm all over the place now, and I don't want her to feel like I'm not doing the job. Your your what kind of price range you need? Two hundred, two fifteen, no more than two fifteen. You are in what we call know, the hottest market ever. I know. I, I offered yesterday a house of 200 I went 215 as is, and uh, I only asked for $3,000, and I lost it. So I don't know what else to do. Take her to a new build site, uh, Bella Vista, <laughs> over off of Irvington and Kolb. They start at 217 Bella Vista, where is that? Irvington and Kolb. Irvington oh, and I took I took her to hmm, where is the new houses? It's um but near Valencia and Tucson Boulevard. Is it Tres Pueblos? Is it Deer Horton? I don't know why she would don't want a new house. Because obviously they have less space, I guess. Yeah, less yards. Thing is, you are you are literally competing with ten to fifteen other buyers on that exact house. I no know. matter what side of town you're on, unless you are ten to fifteen miles outside of city proper, you're going to. And be then they multiple. they ask the the sellers are calling you back. Would you go more? Like, would you go higher? Um, and I my my question for them is, would, is it going to value? Like, is it going to appraise? Probably not. So they don't know. Hmm. You can tell them, yeah, are we willing to go higher? Yeah, but what happens when it doesn't appraise? Yeah, so. But that's the thing, Street uh, Church, you're doing everything you can, going over on offer pricing. Get a get a, a, a real sappy love story of a letter for a first introduction you can put on your, your offers and send with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Have your client write a letter. Because she's, she's a nurse, and I mean, oh, yeah, she's a, a young nurse, I'm, yeah. I'm going to. Send a video, uh, send a sob video. Uh, how do I keep her like her interest? Like she's losing the interest in buying the house. It's your it's and your confidence in the market, and I can tell right now in this conversation that you you've even given up on the search. You need to speak as if it's out there. We need to keep fighting for it. This is the situation. We're no longer in the market where one offer, one sale, one move. That's it. Right now, we're out in a street fight. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to roll up. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <for a> battle. <laughs> That's the thing is you're competing against agents like me out there that have five clients that will buy this house for ten to twenty thousand dollars over list because they need a house right now because and they're no concessions. selling their house. And no concessions. I mean, if you have to go with no concessions too, and write the letter. She's a nurse for goodness sakes. You know how much we love nurses? Oh know. my gosh, she could easily pull on some heartstrings there and that, that will I think that would really help. Okay. So I've had the we'll, same problem we'll too. Do. How do I keep her like excited and all that? You be excited. Mm, you definitely. be optimistic. I am excited. You you keep I write her there. every day, text her every day, like, hey, you know, and send them houses. I even she even sent me like go see this house and if you like it, put an offer. I was like, is that crazy? That's how it is. Yeah. How many offers have you lost so far? Mm, well, I'll start. I did start with her a month and a half ago. So we every week we see we put out two or three offers. So it's been I lost a count now. Like my dot loop is crazy. Like, yeah. This welcome to a seller's market. This is the true definition of a seller's market. <laughs> but again. My question is, how do you keep her excited? And what if she really needs a concession, write a letter and try to, or send a video to see if that helps? Oh, yeah. I still would consider new builds, even though she may not. I mean, mm -hmm. don't rule them out. I mean, I love my little new build. I have a huge yard. I just I, got I, a lot and I got a huge yard, so. I, I'm gonna take her again to see if she, if she like she would like to do that but she she feels like she owes something to the lender and i'm like no you don't Keller mortgage. Keller mortgage. 
I know. <laughs> no, going going to a new building, she she feels like she's cheating on the lender. Oh no. It's all about it's all about her happiness in the end. The lender's not gonna be there in twenty years when she's living in that house. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Or, pay, yeah. or pay her mortgage. <laughs> no. It's about her what, happiness. Does it um I should know this, but I don't um because I haven't stopped in. It's on my list for this week. Um what is where's La Estancia starting at? What sorry? Lost. I'm, 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 I'm asking the group. What's law? Do anybody know what the, what the starting price oh, is? I live, in La, I live in La Yeah, I live here. Um, what, what? But they say um, they say the low two hundreds. Um, but you know the the lot price. Of course, you you have the like. I ended up at around two fifty with the lot price and everything. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I don't know. That was I closed in January. So and they're like, oh my gosh, they're selling like crazy. The ones that are next door to me. There's there's probably only five out of 20 that are even available if that okay. I wasn't sure where, where they were priced at all right guys we'll stay keep positive keep confident and get out there we got a couple minutes before our nine o'clock all partners meeting I'd love to see you on this some great information to be put out there so awesome. join in on the mornings if you can Teresita thank you for bringing that out there the piece of advice I will give you is stay resilient get out there be very strong Can you are a woman hear me roar let's do this <laughs> It is a street fight. As long as we are telling our clients up front, this is going to be a battle. But don't worry. Trigger term. Don't worry. I'm One more thing. One more thing. Uh, since it's a battle out here and you don't know, like, I don't know if my client is going to by herself go look for new houses. I register on every new site on her budget. And I register, like, Two of my clients because hey. I knew hey. they were gonna go by themselves and since COVID right now you don't have to go with them they take your uh, reservation as a, you went with them so so far I have two people of my sphere that did that I knew they were ready and they were gonna go and it worked because I just said like hey this is my, my client is gonna be there sometime this week and they did yeah. and yeah. It did work. I I kept them as a, my clients. Come here, push the door. I like that. Do the work. Use the phone calls. I'll see you guys in just a couple minutes. Bye. Bye.